Hey there, good morning. Welcome to our beautiful 90 minute practice. Give everyone a few minutes to hop on. We'll get started soon. And today I thought I would read an animal message for everyone. So let's see which beautiful creature of the world comes through for us today. Ah, the duck. Let's see what duck says for us today. This is a time of fertility, either literally or metaphorically. It's a time to have fun and maybe even get a little silly. The time of turmoil has passed, so now you can release any pent up emotions that have been suppressed. Do whatever is necessary to find emotional comfort rather than trying to deny your need for this. Hey Nicole, how you doing today? And of course, for those of you that are here early, um, let me know if there are any special requests for stuff and I'll do my best to integrate it with the other stuff we're doing today. Another little bit from the duck. Whatever project you've engaged in, this is a time for great productivity. Whatever new ideas come to you, develop and pursue its manifestation. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Good time to work on projects, yeah? Hey, Kathy, how are you doing today? Ready for our complete practice. I love doing a full hour and a half. I mean, obviously, I just love yoga anyway, <laughs> and spend probably mm, two to four hours on a daily basis doing it anyway, or practicing, but you know, uh, maybe, even, maybe even more, because it's not all just that physical stuff, right? It's in here. It's in here. It's a constant practice, all day, every day. And the message that I read from Duck, of course, is talking about, you know, bringing a little bit more lightheartedness into life. Yeah, laughing a little bit more. Because really, I mean, when we look at the outside world, it's getting a little bit ridiculous. Um, <laughs> and sometimes we really just need to laugh. And not because things are funny always, but sometimes... We just need to let stuff go, yeah? Impermanence, Kyle was talking about it in class earlier this week. I mean, I know we talk about it all the time in class. I wore my cool skull shirt today <laughs> to help represent that idea of impermanence, yeah? None of us really know why we're here, yeah? That's why it's so important to tune into our hearts so we can tap into our soul purpose, yeah? Humanity in itself, we are of nature. So we need to simply be human. That's a practice in itself, right? A cat doesn't seem to have a problem being a cat. So why do humans like to confuse so much? Why do they like to distort so much and just cloud the view of what it is to simply be human and tap into the heart space, tap into the space of empathy, compassion, and that knowing that we are deeper than what we see as this superficial amalgamation of literally just a bunch of cells vibrating together to create this solid image. Yeah, we all know we're not solid, right? We all know we're just a whole bunch of cells going e Yeah. <laughs> and we're not supposed to be able to really understand it. That's why it's, I think, you know, such a magical thing, this life. 
Hey Nadine, nice to see ya. Feels like it's been a little while. Hey, change of schedule. Hey Suzanne. Awesome. Fun times. So we will start. Yeah. All right, let's start. And we will start in a seated position today. So if you need your blanket or anything, please grab it so you can be comfortable in a seat and also bring the non-habitual foot in front and really set yourself up in a sweet Sukhasana or easy pose. Sukha means comfort, basically. Bring the palms face down onto the knees. Let's simply sit tall and close through the eyes. Notice your breath, notice your mind, notice your heart. Checking yourself out from the inside. Turning off the dis distractions from the outside. Notice what thoughts are streaming through. Notice which areas of the body are asking for attention, if any. Observing that balance across the chest and shoulders, the length in your spine, and the balance across your hips and in through your sit bones. And let's really get into that heart space today without judgment. And just for a moment, imagine if all the things you knew of life, all the relationships, all the experiences, everything you know, everything you felt, what if all of that were to simply fall away? And what you were left with is you sitting on your yoga mat. No preconceived notion of what is or isn't. No judgments of what is right or wrong or good or bad. What is left of you sitting here? Which aspects of yourself would you like to make present, like to make seen? to yourself, to others? Which aspects of life, experience, relationship, what falls away with ease? Where do you find that you really hang on? And notice the sensation in and around your heart space. Notice that shift. When we let go, there is a presence of lightness. And when we cling or hang on, there is a sensation of heaviness. So today let's work on creating freedom around this heart space. Letting go of judgment letting go of what we think we know about ourselves or others and simply be in this space here and now. Eyes are still closed, really focusing into the heart space. Start to visualize your heart encompassed in your rib cage. Notice the color, notice the movement of that beating heart. And 
Notice if it feels tight or if the space around it feels tight or if you feel open and free. And let's create some inner space. So expanding that inner vision from your heart now in and around to your ribs. And whichever direction you want, start to circle the ribs around the hips, just tiny circles. Eyes stay closed. We're just rotating rib cage around the hips. Still noticing that beautiful beating heart. Notice the breath moving in and out of your lungs. And take note of how clearly you are able to see yourself from the inside without judgment, just simple observation. There is a much deeper ability of self-awareness that we all have access to, but we need to give ourselves time and patience to practice. Slightly bigger circles with the ribs around the hips. Notice any responses from your ankles, your knees, your hip flexors, your spine, whatever is coming in through the mind. Notice what you notice. Continue, the circles get a little bit bigger. Eyes are still closed. Let go of judgment from the outside of what you think it needs to look like and simply experience. Slightly bigger circles, same direction still. And then when you're ready, keeping the circles large, reverse the direction. So we're staying in a big circle, going the opposite way. Hands are still on the knees. Notice the spaces opening up around the hips. Notice the spaces that might feel like they're staying stuck. And just let it be what it is not fixating on one thing or the other. Breathing, being. Circles get slightly smaller. And a little bit smaller. Ribs are circling around the hips. And then the circles get even smaller so that the hips are once again rooted and just those ribs are circling around. Opening these spaces up. And then eventually super small circles and we come back into stillness. Eyes are still closed, hands reach out to sides, up to ceiling. Look up to the hands, blink open through the eyes. And then palms face down, the hands come down by the sides, exhaling. Inhale, palms face up, we reach up. Exhale, palms face down, we go down. So we'll pick up the pace a bit. Breath is in and out of the nose. Doesn't have to be super fast, but we want to start building some heat. We worked on this a little bit yesterday as well. Like we're opening our wings for the first time, yeah? Maybe you could even really notice that movement, not only in your shoulders, but through your shoulder blades, through your lats. Notice if there are any sticky spaces around the ribs. Keep going. Now 
Notice if there's any tension hanging on in through your neck or your traps. Keep going. Let that heat build. You've got it. Three more. Last one. And hands down. Let's twist left hand onto the right knee. Right hand behind the body, opening your heart to the right. Slow, steady breath, maybe looking beyond your right shoulder. That right hand is as close into your hips as you can to help that spine stay nice and tall. And then when you're ready, just gently exhale to release. And then we'll go to the other side. So right hand out to the left knee, left hand is behind. We sit really tall and rotate that chest to the left. Just holding here. Maybe that navel can draw in just slightly. Looking perhaps beyond that left shoulder. Beautiful, and then release. From here, let's reach the hands forwards, roll over the shins. We're coming into table pose, and we will be here for a couple minutes. So if you need any extra padding, set that blanket underneath your knees. Knees are under hips, hands are underneath the shoulders. Draw that navel in. Toes could be tucked or untucked, whatever is more comfortable for you here. The right hand reaches straight forwards and then up to the ceiling, open that chest, and then reach that hand to the back edge of your yoga mat, and then circle it down and forwards again, all the way up, big circle, reach it back, and one more, circle it down, forwards, all the way up and back, and then we'll just bring that right palm down, Nice and solid onto the ground. Left hand then reaches forwards and then circles up to ceiling. Open that chest to the left. Stay strong in your right arm. Left hand reaches to the back edge of the mat and then circles down, forwards, up and around again. Reach it back and one more time, forwards, up and around beautiful and then we'll bring that left hand back down from here right knee opens out to the right little puppy big fire hydrant those arms stay straight and strong breathing in breathing out breathing in straighten your right leg out to the right like you're doing a side kick arms are still straight and then bend the knee and lengthen the leg. You got it. And bend. One more time. Lengthen. And then we're planting that right foot down on the ground. So that leg is straight. Right hand reaches up. Full inhale. Exhale. Upper body lifts up. Right hand to the outer right leg. Left hand reaches up and over. Breathing in. 
breathing out. Breathing in, left hand up, over and down to the ground, over to the left. Right hand sweeps up and over to the left, palm face down. Nice big stretch here, breathing in. Breathing out, make sure that right foot feels nice and rooted. And then slowly sweep right hand back forwards and down, left hand back forwards and down, right knee comes in. Left knee opens up, little puppy big fire hydrant. Arms are straight and strong, navel's drawing in, we breathe. Left leg extends out to the left, good, and then bend that knee, and lengthen the leg, bend the knee, beautiful, and then lengthen nice and long, and then the sole of the left foot comes down, left hand sweeps up, breathe in. On the breath out, when you're ready, upper body floats up, left hand to outer left leg, right hand reaches up and over. Mm-hmm, isn't that fabulous? Enjoy all that wonderful spaciousness around the right hip. And then next inhale, right hand up, over and down to the ground, just to the right, left hand to ceiling, or left hand can even reach over to the right, Left foot's rooted down, we breathe in, breathe out. One more in, and then left hand just sweeps forwards and down, right hand joins, left knee comes in. We're back to table. Three rounds of cat-cow, so exhaling, arch the back up, gaze towards the navel. And inhale, hammocking the belly down to the mat, Heart opens forwards, maybe looking upwards. Arms are straight and strong. Two more, exhale, find that cat pose. Inhale, find that cow. Pressing down through index and thumb knuckles. One more here, follow your breath. Awesome. Let's come into stillness. The right hand is coming behind the skull. So you're cupping the back of your head with your right palm. The right elbow is bent and out to the side. Open your chest to the right so that right elbow faces the ceiling. Breathe it in. Breathe it out. Push that left hand down. Push the right knee down. Really find that open space. Yes. Awesome. Now from here, right leg extends back and root the sole of the foot down. So it's like a modified side plank. Your chest is opening. The right toes face to the long edge of your yoga mat. Sole is rooted down. Full breath in. Full breath out. And then right fingertips reach to the wall ahead of you towards top edge of yoga mat. Palm face down. Big stretch here. Full inhale. Full exhale. Good. One more in. And then on breath out, the right knee and the right elbow are going to come to meet. So right knee bends, left el or right elbow bends. And then we extend, try to keep the right foot floating on this. And then bend, side crunch. Good. One more time. Lengthen, reach, reach, reach. And crunch. From the crunch, Knee and hand come back down, we're in table. Left hand behind the skull, navel draws in, and then we open our chest to the left. Left elbow shines up to the ceiling, our neck is long, right arm is long, left knee pushes down. Breathing in, breathing out. Notice that heat starting to move through the body. Notice those little spaces of tension starting to uncover. And then from here, left leg extends back, heel is down. So we're in a modified side plank here. Open, open, open that heart. Full breath in. 
and out. Lengthening left arm forwards to top edge of yoga mat, palm face down, nice and long. Stay stable here, and then exhale when you're ready. Left elbow bends, right left knee bends in, crunch. And then do your best to keep left leg floating off the mat. Reach away, and crunch. Reach away, and crunch. Knee and elbow meet, and then left hand down, left knee down. Tabletop pose, tapping into puppy stretch. So hips stay above the knees. We're coming forwards onto the fingertips. The arms reach out as the hands reach forwards. We look forwards and let that chest and chin come down to the ground. So we want to have the throat open here. The chest might not touch, okay? And if it's really uncomfortable on your neck, you can put your forehead down. The forearms, the elbows are lifted. Imagine the triceps wrapping into your face so you can really tap into that integration through the shoulders and through the lats. Breathing in and breathing out. And then when you're ready, nice and easy, Crawl those fingers back in, bum comes to the heels, just find child's pose for a moment. And from child's pose, we shift table with the forearms down on the mat. We want our elbows as wide as the shoulders, palms are flat down, toes are tucked. Knees and hips lift up, dolphin pose. Those toes can walk a little closer in. Of course, if you were using your blanket, you could set that aside now. Elbows are under shoulders again, so just double check that they didn't move. Toes walk a little closer in so the knees can bend. And breathe, looking at the space between your elbows. Think of pushing your elbows down. Step your big toes together. Awesome. The right leg reaches up and back, long and strong, and then bend your right knee and draw big circles with your right knee. Whatever direction you start is great because we're doing both. So three big circles one way, and then reverse, three big circles the opposite way, really stirring that femur bone around in the hip socket. Be very aware of the stability across your chest and shoulders. And then after that final circle, right toes come down. Stay strong, left leg lifts up. Pausing here, breathing in. You've got it, bend that knee and draw big circles, three of them, whatever direction you start. Remember, it's fabulous. And then reverse, go the other way. Find the little bits of shape. Steady breath, you've got this. Beautiful. After those three, left toes come down, knees to the ground, child's pose. Hands could drag back. Maybe the hands are stacked under the head. Beautiful. All right, once again, elbows forwards onto the mat, palms are flat, hips away from heels, tuck the toes, dolphin pose. So even just coming up into dolphin pose, you may notice that your elbows kind of slide away from each other. So make sure they're under those shoulders. Toes step in a little closer towards you so the knees gently bend. Really working through that gunky stuff that likes to stick around the heart, that likes to stick around the ribs. So from here, look at your feet for a moment and step them a little bit wider than your hips. Okay, the knees are bent. From here, the heels are both dropping to the left. 
So the knees point to the right. Yes. And then back to center. Heels to the right, knees point left. So hips drop right a little bit. You got it. Back to center. Heels to the left, toes to the right. Nice little twist, press those elbows down. Back to center. Heels to the right, twist. Yes. Good. One more, center. Heels to the left. Oh, get in there. And center. Heels to the right. Beautiful. Back to center. Knees come down. Untuck toes. Sit on the shins. Okay. So now from here, you may want your blanket again. We're going to be on the shins for a couple minutes. Excuse me. So open the knees about as wide as your shoulders. We've done this a few times before. It's the temple lion breath. So the palms are coming down to the mat just outside the knees. We want to do our best to keep our arms straight and strong here. And the bum is just heavy onto the feet. You could even kind of slide your butt cheeks between your heels if your body is okay with that. Your knees can come a little wider if you need to as well, okay? So we want to make sure we're pretty comfortable here. Palms are flat down. Now open your chest, really get that proud lion type stance, yeah? Breathing in, breathing out. Okay. Now we'll work our breath of fire in and out of the nose. Just a few notes. Breath of fire, we want the tip of the tongue pressed to the roof of the mouth so that that breath can move really smooth and easily down the throat, out the throat. Okay. So in and out of the nose with this breath, pumping action of the belly. Begin as you're ready. Let that inner heat build. We're opening up spaces around the heart. So break through those areas of tension. As we break through areas of tension around the heart, we get to tap in deeper to our eternal youth, yeah? The heaviness of attachment really adds to the age we feel. Yeah, the heaviness we feel. Keep breathing, break through those old boundaries. Breathe all the way in, lift your pelvic floor, draw belly in, hold, and exhale. Stay right through your chest, keep the positioning the same, except take your hands behind your back, interlace the fingers, base of palms together as best as you can, cross the left thumb over the right. And then from here, keep your chest opening forwards, reach your knuckles back, so lifting the thumbs away from the back of the hips. Close your eyes, peel open the tension around your heart, around your throat, around your third eye. Get all of that tension to soften and release. Keep pulling those knuckles back. Breathe. Tap into that eternal youth within you. 
Notice the resistance of the mind that comes up here. Use your breath to reach even more through the knuckles. Use your breath to open more through your heart. Notice how the opening of the heart makes it a little more tolerable to be here. And of course, observe the voices of the ego that tell you that you're not enough and show them that they're wrong. Those voices of ego, they have no business in the driver's seat. So breathe instead. Tap into that resilient self. You can do this, we're almost there. Feel that peeling away. Mm -hmm. And when you're ready, slowly release the hands, settle into child's pose just for a moment. Beautiful. Hands come back forwards. We shift table, lengthen legs back, plank. Hands are underneath shoulders. Take a peek underneath you and let's open the feet a little wider than the hips. And then look back to the top edge of your yoga mat. Let's drop the heels to the left and then center. Drop the heels to the right. You got it. Center. Heels to the left. Center, heels to the right. Good, center, strong chest. One more to the left, center, and one more to the right, center. Downward dog. Relax the head, relax the neck. Wrap those triceps into your face, long through the arms, breathing in, flex through those quads, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Beautiful. Let's step the feet a little closer together so big toes could even touch. Right foot floats all the way up and back. Breathe it in. And then we shift plank as we bend right knee and pull it into the nose and round the spine. Three limb dog, right toes up. And then knee to nose, round that spine. One more, lengthen that leg up. And round the spine, knee to nose. Downward dog. Left toes float up, long and strong. Straight through those arms. Left knee bends, round the spine, knee to nose. Inhale, three limb dog. Exhale, round the spine, you got it. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, round. And down dog. Breathing in, looking forwards. Breathing out, walk or hop the feet to the hands. Looking forwards, half back pose, fingers on the mat or on your shins. And then a nice little fold here. While we are in the fold, bring your feet so the inner edges of the feet are touching. Spread your toes nice and wide. Engage through your core and come up to standing with a nice long spine. Hands circle out to sides, up to ceiling. Palms can come together if available. If not, don't stress about it. Squeeze through those legs, squeeze through the glutes. Reach the hands to the right. Center, left, center, breathe in. To the right, breathe out. 
center and left. Stay with the breath, center to the right, center to the left, good, center to the right and we'll hold, right hand comes down, outer side of right leg, drag those fingertips down towards the outer knee, breathe in, squeeze those legs, breathing out. Next inhale, both hands up through center and reach to the left, exhale. Left hand comes down, outer side of left leg, and we reach. Keep the legs strong. Feet are strong. Beautiful. Up through center, both hands, and then hands down in front of the heart. So big toes stay touching, heels can open up a few inches away from each other. From this place, hands reach straight forward, shoulder height, palms face down. We lift the heels up. So find your driste, your point of focus. Keep those heels lifted, squeeze your fingers together, and then bend at your knees, awkward chair. Full inhale, full exhale here. Keep those heels up. Breathe. And then when you're ready, relax hands down, straighten legs, heels come down. Hands sweep forwards up, we lean back. Hips move forwards, arms reach back. Mm -hmm. And then reach all the way up, hands down through heart center. Pause for a moment here, breathing in, breathing out. And we'll do that one more time. So make sure those heels are still a few inches apart, big toes are touching. Hands reach straight forwards, palms face down, shoulder height, squeeze fingers, heels lift up. We bend into the knees as the knees draw together, inner thighs together, navel draws in. We're in awkward chair, awkward pose. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. Breathe out, beautiful, one more in. And as we exhale, we'll relax hands, lower heels, straighten legs, inhale, hands sweep up, we lean back. Nice little back bend here, really send those hips forward, squeeze those butt cheeks, reach, 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 and come all the way up, hands down through heart center. Beautiful. Release hands down. We're at the top of the mat. Let's start stepping the right foot back. Right heel lowers down. So we're in that warrior stance. Heel to heel alignment or heel to inner arch alignment if that's better for you. Left knee stays above left ankle. Left elbow onto left knee. Palm face up. Right hand up and over reaching to the wall ahead of you. Breathing in, right palm is face down. Breathing out, nice side angle pose here. Deep inhale. And exhale. Beautiful, let's inhale, come up, exalt that warrior. So the right hand to the outer right leg, left hand reaches to the back of the room. Left knee stays bent over that left ankle. Breathing in. Breathing out. Beautiful. And then from here, let's come to warrior two. Excellent. And then forwards to crescent pose. Left or right heel lifts as the hands sweep forwards and up. And then we'll relax hands and step right foot forwards. Beautiful. As you're ready, we'll step the left foot back, land the heel down, so we have our warrior stance here. Right knee above right ankle, left toes are pointing out to the left. 
Right elbow onto the right thigh, right palm face up. We open our chest, left hand sweeps up and overhead, palm face down, reaching to the wall ahead of us. And breathe, keep that chest open. Good. And then when you're ready, let's bring left hand to outer left thigh. That right hand sweeps up and over. Maintain that bend in the right knee. Solid foundation in those legs. And warrior two, right hand forward, left hand back. And then crescent pose, left hand sweeps forwards as the left heel lifts up. Beautiful. And then step forwards as the hand rel hands relax down. Breathing in. And breathing out. Okay. Right foot steps back again. Drop the heel. Warrior stance. Left elbow comes back onto the left thigh, palm faces up. Okay, beautiful. This time, big circles with that right hand. So start to circle that right arm. Mm -hmm. Reaching the hand forwards and up and back and around. One more like that, all the way forwards, back and around and reverse, back, forwards, down and back forwards and down. One more time. You got it. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Right fingertips reach straight up, staying here, or left hand slides down to the ground, inside left foot, only if it's available with ease. If it's not, keep that elbow on the knee. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, and then breathing out, draw belly in, come all the way to that exalted warrior, right hand to right thigh, reach the fingers back. And warrior two, crescent, and step forwards. Fabulous. Left leg is going back, so left leg back, heel drops down, warrior stance. Hips are open, warrior two stands, I should say. Right elbow onto the right thigh, palm face up. From this place, so check yourself out. Make sure right knee's still above the right ankle. Left hand reaches up. And start those big circles, reaching forwards, down, back. Whichever way you started, doesn't really matter. Just three big circles with that left arm. And then reverse, go the opposite way. Full circles. Mm -hmm. Get right into that gunky stuff. And then when you're ready, that left hand sweeps all the way to the outer left leg. Right hand reaches back. We're in that exalted warrior. And then back to warrior two. Back to crescent, that left heel lifts as the left hand sweeps forwards and up. And then we step back forwards. Beautiful. Breathing in, just double check your feet are together here. Hands sweep up and we lean back. Pause here. And then hands down through heart center, nice and neutral. Okay, right foot steps back again, the heel drops down. Warrior two, we're open hips. Left hand is coming down all the way to the ground inside left foot. So if this is not possible at all for you, you're going to have a block here, okay? Right hand reaches up, breathing in. If available, right hand comes behind the back, breathing out so you can feel your outer left thigh with your right hand. Maybe, maybe not. Left hand could stay on the block or the ground, or left hand can come underneath that left thigh, and you can find a bind here. Maybe looking up to the ceiling in a bound side angle pose. 
Those legs are still straight and strong. Breathe it in. Breathe it out. Breathing in. And then breathing out. If you had that bind, slowly undo. Hands come forwards and down to the mat, either side of that left foot. Back heel lifts, and we step forwards. Good. Standing up. Left foot steps back. Warrior stance. The heel drops. Right knee is bent. Right hand is sliding all the way down inside that right foot. Again, using block if you need. Left hand up to the ceiling. Breath in, breath out. And pausing here, or if available, left elbow bends so that hand can drop behind your back. Maybe you can find the outer right thigh. Chest is open. If available with ease, that right hand comes behind the back, and you can find a bind. Open chest. So be sure that your chest is facing over to the left and not down to the ground here. Breathing in, breathing out. Steady through the feet. And then slowly when you're ready. If you have that bind, undo. Gently release the hands. Down to the mat, either side of left, right foot, left heel lifts, step forwards. Half back pose on breath in. And then breathing out, we'll plant the palms and walk into plank. So moving into a chaturanga from here. So you might want your knees down, okay? So make sure your chaturangas are one straight line. We don't want the bum lifting up. We want a straight line, elbows draw in and we lower down. Okay? And then we pull forwards and up, cobra or up dog. See what works better. And then downward dog. And we'll do two more like that. So being really conscious of these beautiful straight lines you can create within your body. We inhale plank. So the navel draws in. Think of your pubic bone moving to your sternum. That'll help that straight line and it'll help you keep the legs strong. Lower down. Elbows touch the ribs. Good, pull forwards and up, up dog or cobra, and then down dog. One more time and I'll demo this one with the knees down. So we come forwards plank, think of pubic bone to sternum, strong core, knees maybe lower, chest lowers, elbows still pull in, hips lower down, cobra, and then we push up, down dog. Breath in, breath out. Four more rounds of breath in your down dog. Beautiful. Looking forwards when you're ready, and walk or hop the feet to the hands. Looking forwards in a half back pose, and then we'll stand up. Beautiful. All right, so stepping into some balanced postures here. So you can, of course, stay on your yoga mat, or if it's really cushy, you might want to step onto your floor. Make sure you have a decent amount of space around you so you're not like kicking stuff off the shelves. So let's start with feet about hip distance apart, okay? Arms, they're gonna be your balanced flags. So let them be where they need to, maybe on the hips or maybe just out to the sides, okay? Rooting into the right foot, draw the navel in and just start to lean to the right so your left foot can lift up. And then lift your left leg all the way up and over to the left. So you're doing a big side kick, okay? If you've done karate or taekwondo, set up, okay? Breathing in, breathing out. Stay solid, you've got this. And then just bring that left foot down to the mat. Root down into the sole of that foot so we can float the right foot up, 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 and up. Hold. 
set up. Yeah, see where you can be. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let's come all the way down. Cool. We'll do that again. Left leg goes out and up. Awesome. Holding. And then come down. Right leg goes out and up. Holding. Yes. And comes down. One more each side. Left leg out and up. Yeah. And down. And one more time to the right. Right leg out and up. Nice. And then all the way down. Cool. So noticing how the balance was feeling there. From here, rooting down into your right foot, let the left heel lift up like a little kickstand. So get yourself feeling strong. Now something to observe before we go deeper is when you go into balance poses like this, make sure you're not like swinging all your weight into the standing leg. We don't want to be pushing our hip out to the side, okay? We want integration. So your quad on the right side should feel strong, okay? From here, pick your left leg up. And now a number of options for this, okay? Hands can hang on behind the left leg. Practice getting straight through your right leg. If available, now there's all kinds of things to practice, okay? So really honor your body. That right leg is straight and solid. If that's happening, the upper body can fold over the left leg. If that's happening and your right leg is still straight, you can grab on to your left foot, interlacing your fingers underneath that heel. And then maybe the left leg extends forwards. Practice keeping both legs straight. Maybe your forehead can touch your left shin, but maybe not, okay? It doesn't matter. Just practice, practice, practice. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. And then slowly bend left knee. If you straighten leg, release foot, step down. Woo! Shake it out. Rooting into the left foot. Right heel lifts. And then notice, once that right heel lifts, usually the body will go into that place that it just goes to naturally. And sometimes that means leaning out. So if that means leaning out for you, tuck it in, okay? Strong and integrated. That left quad should feel like stone. Okay, I know y'all are super buff. So feel how strong that left quad is. And hang out here. Okay, practice strong and straight left leg. If available with ease, right knee lifts. Hands come behind the thigh. When we practice being here, straight left leg. Keep it rock solid. Maybe the upper body folds towards right thigh. Practice being here. This is beautiful. If available, we get those fingers interlaced underneath the right heel. Left leg is still straight and strong. Navel draws in. Possibility of straightening that right leg out. Possibility of forehead coming into that right shin. But the navel needs to draw inwards, and that left leg needs to straighten. Breathing in, breathing out. You've got it. Look at those beautiful lungs. Feel the space around your heart. And then gently bend right knee. Release, right foot down. Oh yeah, shake it out. Okay. So from here, rooting into that right foot again. Left heel lifts. So we've got our little kickstand. And then step up with the left foot. Now we're using both hands. If you do Bikram yoga, this will be very, um, well, it'll be in your practice. It'll be pretty familiar to you. We're taking those hands to scoop underneath that left shin, calf, and foot. Okay? 
And now we can stay right here. If it's available with ease, you can bring the outer edge of that left foot into the right hip crease so your left sole is facing the ceiling. Now something to be aware of, we don't want that left knee way out to the left, okay? We want the left knee, whoa, to face down, okay? So being where you can, and that might mean hanging on to the foot. That's great, practice balancing. Breathe in, breathe out. And just be here. If you happen to have the half lotus position, you could reach the hands up. Remember, be where you need to. Possibility of bending into the right knee and coming into toe stand. So the right knee bends. Yeah, and only do this if your foot's in that half lotus, okay? No pain should be in your knees or ankles. We come down and the right heel lifts off and we balance. Okay? You can practice bringing palms to prayer. You can practice simply balancing here. Be kind. Is it easy? No. I mean, it might be for you. I don't know. Full breath in, full breath out. Embody wherever you're at because you're amazing exactly where you are. And then, if you went down into the toe stand, we lift the hips back up, we lift the upper body up, and gently we all remove the foot. Left foot comes down. Shake out the legs. Ground into the left leg. Right heels up like a little kickstand. Check in with yourself, strong left leg. Right foot picks up. Maybe we can scoop those hands and just hang on to the foot here. Okay, practicing balance, being in this place. If it's available, that right outer foot comes to the left hip crease, the knee faces down, the sole faces up. Okay, and you can hang on to that foot here and just practice your breathing. If it's comfortable-ish for you, you could also reach hands up and practice being here. If it's available, you can practice the toe stand. So bending into that left knee, so you can come down, down, down. Now the left heel will lift your fingertips, find the ground and pause. Gain your balance here. Notice what's happening across the, um, the ball of the left foot. Breathe in, breathe out. Yeah. And again, no discomfort on the knees. So if you feel uncomfortable, you've probably gone a little bit far, okay? Discomfort on the knees often stems from tension in the hips. So be very kind. And if you came all the way down in that toe stand, we lift the hips back up. The left heel comes down. The upper body lifts up. And then we release. Right foot down. Shake it out. Okay, one more. Rooting into the right foot, left foot steps up. Right hand to the outer left thigh or to the outer left foot. You do what works for you. Left leg extends, left hand reaches behind. So we're opening our chest to the left. Full inhale and exhale. Breathing in, breathing out. Beautiful. From here, chest rotates back to center. Let go of left foot. Cross the left thigh over the right. Okay? Elbows out to the sides. Right elbow crosses under left. Maybe palms come together. Garudasana, eagle pose. Bend into the right knee. And maybe take a nice little fold forwards here, just breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out.
Squeeze those legs, squeeze the arms. Keep the arms where they're at, unravel left leg, lengthen it behind you, warrior three with eagle arms, straighten your right leg. Full breath in. Full breath out. And then when you're ready, come up to standing, left foot down, undo your arms. Shake it out. Beautiful. Left foot, roots down. Right foot, lifts up. Left hand to outer right thigh or outer right foot. See what works for you. Possibility of right leg extending, right arm reaches behind. And we breathe. Find your balance, find your place of focus. Complete inhale, exhale, left leg is straight and strong. And then from here, nice and easy, that left knee can, or right knee can bend. We cross it over the left, arms are out like a cactus, left elbow crosses under right, Palms together, squeeze thighs, squeeze arms, and fold upper body over the thighs. Keep squeezing those legs together, left knee is bent now, keep squeezing. Breathing in, breathing out. And then unravel that right leg, straighten both legs, warrior three with eagle arms. Breathe, focus, and then come back to standing, release the arms, shake it out. Fabulous. From here, open your legs wide on your yoga mat. Outer edges of the feet are parallel with the short edges of your mat, so there's a slight pigeon toe action, just a little. Hands on the hips, bum moves back as we hinge at the hips and fold forwards. If available, grab onto your ankles or heels and let your head drop. Breathing in, breathing out. Let the head drop a little heavier. Beautiful. Hands come onto the mat in front of you. The toes are probably going to need to go outwards now, but you be the judge for your own hips, okay? So I'm suggesting left toes go out so you can bend into left knee, right toes face the ceiling. You can keep your hands down or have your hands out in front more of a martial arts style, okay? So totally up to you. And then we're going over to the right. So you gotta bring the right foot down, pivot it out so then your left toes can go up. Okay, we're just gonna do two more each side. I know this is challenging. Come back to the left, right toes up. Come back to the right. Good, and your right heel might be lifted for this you know, so see what works, back to left, and then one more, back to the right, ha, cool. And then back to center, hips lift up, forward fold, adjust your feet, Leg, legs are wide. And then nice and easy, hands walk forwards, modified half back here, heel toe your feet in, 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 and then slowly 
Lower your knees down. Find child's pose. Relax. Nice, complete breath in here. And out. Awesome. Optional, okay? Like all of this is, but we'll work on our headstand. You don't need to know how to do headstand in order to practice this because there's no need to go further than what your body allows today. So shifting into a table with the forearms on the mat, we want the elbows as wide as the shoulders, palms together, interlacing fingers. Now we're landing the crown of our head down so that our palms can cup the back of our head, okay? So elbows are down, and you should feel the elbows rooted under your shoulders. We don't want the elbows all the way wide to the side, okay? There's no support there. We want those elbows in so we can feel the space through our neck. Crown of your head is down, so that's the top of your head. That little space that used to be soft when we were little babies, that's the crown there. Okay? So staying right here, this is beautiful. Stay with the breath. If available with ease, we're going bit by bit. Toes tuck, knees lift up. Okay? So that's a whole different ball game of weight now that you're going to feel on your head. No compression in the neck. Make sure your neck still feels long. If it doesn't, bring your knees back down and practice being there. If you feel good, you can walk the toes in and continuously feel that alignment of your spine. If it feels good here, practice lifting the knees one at a time and just crunch them into your chest and hold, practicing your alignment and headstand here. No need to go any deeper today. Steady. And if both feet were up, Lower one foot down, and then the other, and then just as slow as you went up, lower your knees down, untuck toes, child's pose. Rolling up to a seat, coming onto the bum. From here, lengthening the legs out in front. So if you do need your blanket for a little bit of extra height on the hips, please grab it. We'll start with a straight left leg and then we'll bend the right knee in. The right foot is one very generous fist width away from the inner left thigh. We'll work through our Marichyasana, a ray of light pose. So that right arm comes inside the right leg, and now hands can reach forwards either side of that left leg. If it's available, that right knee hugs in, and that right shoulder is just beyond the right knee. So if you're there, that right arm might be able to wrap around the leg, and the left hand and the right hand can meet behind you in a bind. The chest reaches forwards wherever we're at, whether you have the bind or not. Breathing in, breathing out. Notice how you're breathing.
and nice and easy from where, wherever you've gone, we're coming up, nice and tall with the spine. Right foot steps across to the outer side of the left thigh. Big toe of right foot pushes down, that right leg hugs in. It may be available for you to bend your left knee. That heel is outside the right butt cheek. We're not sitting on our left heel. Okay, and we're here. That big toe on the right foot still pushes down. Everything is hugging in. You can stay here. Possibility to twist to the right. Right hand comes behind. Maybe that left elbow comes outside the right thigh and we revolve here. Now, only if it's available with ease, that left hand can sneak underneath your right thigh and right hand can come behind and they can meet in a bind. But that left elbow is outside the knee. Open your heart, maybe look over your right shoulder. Breathing in, breathing out. Sit tall. Breathe. And then nice and easy, slowly undo from where you've gone. If your left leg was bent, take a moment to straighten it out again. And then working into half lotus here, okay? So we'll start slow because it might not be available for your body today. So starting with the right ankle across the left thigh, the knee can stay wide. So this is stage one, okay? You could stay right here. And if this works for you, please do. Stage two is we take those hands, lift that leg up like we did when we were standing. We point the toe, the outer edge of that left foot is going into, or the right foot rather, is going into the hip crease of the left. So use your hands to help you get that foot there. And then remember the thing with the knee, we don't want it out. We wanted it when we were standing pointing down. So now we want it pointing ahead of us, okay? And then that foot rests in that hip crease, maybe. Maybe it doesn't, there's no forcing, okay? And then final stage three, potentially, no forcing, okay? The knees should not feel uncomfortable. If it's easily accessible, left knee bends, and that foot comes into the right hip crease. So same principle, okay? And we'll just sit, breathing in, breathing out. Now some people's bodies go really easily into lotus. That is not the category I fall into personally. So just see where you're at. But if you are feeling discomfort, please know that it's likely stemming from tight hips. And instead of forcing, be where you need to be. Honor yourself. Breathing in, breathing out. Tall spine, wherever you're at. If you are in your full lotus or even half lotus and you want to give yourself just a little extra heat, you can use your hands, push them on the floor just outside your hips or just ahead of your hips. The heart hinges forwards and lift yourself up for a breath in and a breath out. And then lower yourself down. Undo. Be kind. Undo the legs. Shake them out. Lengthen them out. Cool. Right leg stays straight, <clears throat> left knee bends. One generous foot fist width between the left foot and the right thigh. And we can stay here sitting tall. If available, hands reach forwards, left arm inside left knee. If available with ease, left arm wraps around left leg, right hand comes behind, we find a bind. Breathing. Notice the big toe of the left foot. Keep it pushing down as your heart reaches forwards.
and then nice and easy from here. Release that bind if you had it. Left foot steps to the outer side of the right thigh. Right arm can hug around and you can revolve to the left here. If it's available with ease, that right knee can bend. Heel is outside left hip. We can still hug everything in. Big toe of left foot still pushing down. If available, right elbow outside left thigh, left hand behind. Right palm is like a stop sign. And if available with ease, right hand can sneak underneath that outer left thigh and left hand can come around in a bind. But again, no forcing of any of this stuff. Just simply honor where your body's at today. And then we'll slowly undo from here. From this place, lengthening out that right leg. And left ankle comes across the right thigh when you're ready. So maybe starting right here and maybe we stay here, okay? Making sure you're tall. If available, hands can pick up the left foot. We point the toe. Help yourself out with those hands. Outer edge of that left foot comes into right hip crease. Knee faces forwards and down. And we can pause here in half lotus. Left toes are flaring back. Remember, we don't want to sickle at the ankle or supinate the ankle. If available with ease, right knee can bend. And that foot can hop on top of the left hip crease. Maybe. Wherever you're at, just pause, breathe and B. If you want that extra little challenge from your half lotus or full lotus, palms can come down to the mat just outside the thighs and then we lift the hips up holding our body weight just breathing in breathing out yeah and then lower the hips down gently undo the legs from where you've gone give them a nice little shake and if you were using your blanket under your hips just take a moment to set it aside and then we'll lie all the way down onto the back. Shoulder blades are nice and flat. Let's lengthen the left leg out and bring the right knee into the chest. Breathing in, breathing out here. Beautiful. Moving into an easy twist. Left hand outside right knee. Shimmy your hips over to the right of your yoga mat. So right knee can come all the way down to the left. Right hip stacks on left. Maybe right arm opens out to the right. Beautiful. Nice and easy. Release to come back to center. Nice and easy. Bending through both knees so you can bring your hips back to neutral. And then left knee pulls in. Right leg lengthens down. Breathing in, breathing out.
Moving into twist, right hand outside, left knee. Shimmy your hips over to the left a little bit so that left knee can come down to the right. Open your chest, open through the arms to the degree that feels good for you here. Notice all that fabulous opening. Complete inhale. And exhale. And gently come back to center. Get neutral through the hips. Lengthen down through the legs, just a teeny tiny bit more heat, and then we can relax in that final Shavasana. So we'll be using the breath of fire, as well as doing a little bit of ab work, okay? Legs squeeze together, the hands slide underneath the glutes, so you've got some support here, okay? So make sure you feel really supported underneath your hips. We're doing the action of the feet lifting six inches and then lowering. So we're bouncing the feet as we do breath of fire in and out of the mouth, okay? So you could make a little O shape with your mouth if that makes it easier. Let your head stay relaxed and just start that pulsing through the legs and the pulsing through the belly. Begin when you're ready. breath return lengthen through arms lengthen through legs maybe take up a little bit of extra space lengthen through your neck breath is in and out of the nose eyes are closed Settling into this space. Soften through the skin on your face. Notice the movement of the breath through your body.
Feel your skin relax. Feel your muscles release and relax. Feel your body sink heavier into the support of the ground beneath you. Feel the support of the ground coming up to meet you. Breathing in when you're ready, reaching those arms overhead. Enjoying a nice stretch and reach and wiggle through the body. Bend through the knees one at a time, bringing them into the chest. Give yourself a nice little hug. Maybe rock side to side, whatever feels good. And then when you're ready, roll it up into a seat, something that's comfortable for you. We'll bring palms to prayer at heart center, just closing the eyes for a moment. Noticing all those inner spaces you've moved through today. Drawing a full breath in. And a complete breath out. Settling into that truth of you. And that authentic resonance of your heart space. And thank you all for our practice today. Namaste. And y'all made it all the way through that beautiful 90 minute practice. How lovely is that? Slowed it down a little bit from last week. And I hope you feel like we opened some, some of the stickiness that might have been there. Thank you, Nadine. Glad you enjoyed. Hmm.
Awesome, Kathy, glad you enjoyed. Yeah, and some good challenges in there, yeah? And of course, let me know. I know you know, because I say it like every class, but if there are questions or anything, I am always open to offer what I can, offer any assistance I'm able to, um, or just simply be an ear and a, and a heart, whatever may be needed. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it went fast, right? For 90 minutes, it's like, boom, done. Thank you, Suzanne. Thanks for being here. And there are so many amazing postures to move through. Hmm. Hmm. Forward folds were a good one for this week, though. I think the uh, wide leg forward fold, oh yeah, always feels nice. And it is pretty amazing how fast 90 minutes can go. I feel like most of us have become so programmed in our lives to think that we don't have enough time for things, but we really do. It's just about organizing our time, yeah, for the things that, uh, that we want to fit in. That's really all it is, priorities and mindset, of course. Thank you, Nicole, for being here. Glad you could join in. <sighs> well, sending all kinds of superb love and hugs to all y'all. I'm so grateful we get to share this time and space together. Because of course, without you, I certainly can't do this. So sending so much gratitude out for the ability to be able to share something I love so deeply and feel so deeply within me and I get to share with all y'all. So yes, much love and I look forward to the next time we meet. Peace. <laughs>